Hello and welcome to Stratocast, the Battletech podcast for the UK Southeast. So today we're going to do a bit of garage tech rules here. So this question is asked an awful lot. How do the rules of line of sight work? How does the rule of intervening terrain work? <coughs> and how does the rule of partial cover work? And those are three separate rules and we'll talk about each one individually. But first I thought I'd take you through our little table setup. So these two map sheets are Grasslands 2 and Grasslands 3 from the Battletech A Game of Armoured Combat box set. But I've uh, spiced them up here with some Hextech uh, hills and added an extra Hextech building. Um, one of the reasons I've added the Hextech building is, as many people playing these maps, this road needs to go to somewhere. So there we go. And I've also added some trees that mostly come from a seller on eBay. Just type in six millimeter trees on eBay and you can find these trees. And they're great because they are at the same height as a battle max. They're really good. Uh, you don't need, to, of course, to play with 3D terrain. And that brings us to the first point that Battletech played with hex maps is a board game, not a miniatures game. And that's an important fact because you've always got to remember that one level of height, so for instance, this hill here, one level of height is six meters and one hex is 30 meters. So in other words, it's not to scale. There's six times as much space in a hex as there is in one level. So some line of sight rules that may seem a little strange actually make some sense in the case of a board game. Plus as a board game, it has a level of simplicity to it that playing in a miniatures game, so if you're playing miniatures rules, battle tech or alpha strike, uh, handle differently. And I'm not gonna go into those, I'm just gonna stick to talking about battle tech as a board game using hex maps, or for instance, a hex uh, map sheet, a hex uh, neoprene sheet. So let's go through what we've got here. So we've got a bunch of hills here which are going to be of different levels you've got level one level two level three and then the ground level is level zero we don't have sub levels on this map a couple of maps do but not most of the Battletech uh, grasslands maps that's fine uh, we also have here some trees we have some light woods and we have some uh, resin printed uh, heavy woods here we have this wonderful piece of uh, terrain from Hextech, which is, I don't know what this one's called, but it's a level, I'm gonna say four and five, no, a level five, uh, level three and four building. So this is, this height here is level three, because it's the same height as this. This uh, height here is level four. One good thing about the Hextech uh, system is that the uh, levels are very much um, standardized so they will always be the same height and it makes it very easy to play with. Uh, we have some units to demonstrate here. We have a first sword of light Warhammer, we have a, a timber wolf from Clan Smoke Jaguar, um, we have uh, a demolisher tank down here, um, a token, some, near, some um, acrylic tokens got made for some SRM infantry and a warrior veto l which we'll talk about as well uh, as they have particularly different line of sight rules so that's our basic introduction to our map or oh, we should say we have some water and that's important and depth one water which we'll talk about in a minute so let's get on to talking about the first rule which is going to be line of sight Okay, so we're going to talk about line of sight first then. So the line of sight rules can be found on page 99 of Total Warfare. Uh, they're also in the Battle Mech Manual as well. So we'll just be exploring those. And the first basics about line of sight is line of sight is measured in a straight line from the center of a hex to the center of the hex. And I'm using a laser pointer here, which is very cheap to pick up, but otherwise any straight edge a uh, tape measure uh, and I actually quite find sometimes just a piece of string when I lost my laser pointer I went back to basics and a piece of string which I just could use to very easily go from one place to another one thing about laser pointers is you do get this shaky hand effect but it always has to go from the exact center of the hex to the exact center of the hex sometimes you might find it useful to pop the figures off the table 
when you're trying to work out a particularly difficult line of sight. So that's a very simple, basic line of sight. We're going straight from open to open. Let's try something a little bit more complicated. Now, we're gonna talk about the height of objects first, height of units. So battle max have a height of two. It's quite easy to see from this drone, they have a height of two. Vehicles have a height of one, including VTOLs, and uh, infantry and battle armor. There's a sneaky stand of clan, jade falcon, uh, battle armor over here, also have a height of one. Now that's really important for working out line of sight. Well, we're gonna start with the battle mix and we're gonna start with very simple, uh, a simple uh, demonstration. So we have Warhammer here and the Warhammer is gonna stand here and we're gonna put our timber wolf here. Now this line of sight is blocked because if you look at the level of the uh, terrain between them, the level of the terrain between them is height two. They are height two, and so that blocks it. So in any situation where the height of the terrain is greater than the height of the battle mech, or equal to greater than the height of the battle mech, then it blocks terrain. Now that one's quite a simple one. But if I do something a little bit more complicated and zoom out a bit and go for this one, so we're gonna put this Warhammer over here on this hill. We're going to have our timber wolf down on this uh, hill as well. Now let's work out what level this mech is on. This mech is on a level two hill and it's two levels high. So it's level four. This timber wolf here is two levels high and it's on level one hill. It's three levels high. There is a three level high, the highest piece of terrain between them in the line of sight is this three levels high. So it doesn't block line of sight because the battle, uh, because the Warhammer is on a level four. This is a level three. This is a level three. Even if the Timberwolf was here and then was a level two, so zero plus two, line of sight would still be achieved. If, however, though, when we put this back up here, so this is on a level three and we put the Warhammer here, as long as it doesn't fall off. There we go. If we put the Warhammer on here, you can see that we've now got the Warhammer on level three. We've got the Timberwolf on level three. The line of sight, if I go from hex to hex here, you can see it's passing through the hex that contains the level three. So since the Warhammer's at level three, the Timberwolf's at level three, and the hill's at level three, there's no line of sight. So that's the first basic rule of line of sight. We have a very similar situation here. That's why I show with a vehicle. We've got our Warhammer here on a level one. We've got our tank here, our demolisher on level zero. Because the tank is one level high, that makes the tank one level high. So it's at height one. And the Warhammer is height three because it's two levels high plus the one for the base. And the intervening terrain here is level three. So the tank can't be seen if we move the Warhammer up to the level four. Okay, so two levels for the, uh, for the hill, two levels for the battle mech. You can see it can see because there are no level four terrain objects between it and its target. But then that brings us to our next rule, which is going to be obtaining total cover. In this situation here, we've got our Timber Wolf here standing on a hill on level two, and we've got our Warhammer here standing on uh, level zero, so it's two levels tall. But the Timber Wolf, the, uh, sorry, the Warhammer, is adjacent to, so in the hex next to, a level two hill. If at any time any unit is adjacent to a piece of terrain which has the same seen in line of sight, nor can it see uh, any shots that go through that hex facing. So for instance, if we were to draw here our line of sight, it goes through this hex facing here, which means this Warhammer cannot be seen. Now, if at any time two units are adjacent like this, then there is always line of sight. Not going to stay there, are you? There we go. So adjacent units always 
have line of sight with the exception of being underwater. So in this case, the adjacent units always have line of sight. But even if this Tim Wharf is here on level three, so five levels tall and the Warhammer is here, then the Warhammer has complete cover. Total uh, cover out of line of sight cannot be seen. Now, so this is a situation that often comes into play. Um, but anytime you have a unit that is at the same height as the adjacent terrain. Now, if the Warhammer wanted to see the, uh, if the Timberwolf wanted to see the Warhammer, then if it was here, it still could not see. Now, the reason why is because when you draw a line of sight, if it goes along a hex edge, so the edge between two hexes, then at all times the defender chooses the uh, line of sight, which hex it goes through. And the defender has to abide by that choice. So for instance, the Warhammer here couldn't be seen because the, war, the player of the Warhammer will just say the line of sight passes through the hill. He could say that it passes through the other side, but then the Tim Wolf isn't obliged to say the same. Uh, one of the rare cases where line of sight isn't completely reciprocal. Usually, if I can see you, you can see me. But in this one case, it becomes under a, the player's personal choice whether or not their unit is seen. Not the opponent's, but the defending player's choice. Now, when it comes to vehicles, this gets a bit more complicated as well because mechs are one level tall. But if I take, for instance, our mech here and I place it on here and I take our demolisher tank here and place it here, the demolisher tank can't be seen. Why can't it be seen? Because the demolisher tank is level one level tall. The hill is one level tall. So it is adjacent to a one level tall uh, terrain feature with the same height as the unit. And so it cannot be seen. The Warhammer couldn't see it here, but he could see it if the Warhammer got to here. He also couldn't see it if he was here. So in which case it's going through the hex facing, okay, uh, the the line between hexes, which means the defender, uh, the demolisher tank, would choose not to be seen. But if the demolisher tank chose to fire at the warhammer, uh, then the warhammer could choose not to be seen. This is particularly useful when it comes to battle armor. So if you're trying to bounce your battle armor around the table, uh, and here's your battle armor here, and here's our uh, our warhammer. This battle armor cannot be seen at the moment. If the Warhammer was here though, it could be seen because if we draw our line of sight, the line of sight would not go through the hex facing which uh, of the hex that the uh, infantry are adjacent to. And so this is uh, a valid line of sight. Now, let's next going to look at partial cover. Partial cover is a separate rule to, um, to basic line of sight. Uh, it, it follows some different uh, basic rules and they can be a little bit confusing. Only battle mechs can ever gain the partial cover rule. So you can't gain partial cover if you are infantry, a VTOL, a vehicle, only battle mechs. So in this case, we've got our timber wolf. Our timber wolf is adjacent to a piece of terrain that is one level higher than it is at. So it's at level zero, it's standing on level zero, there's a level one piece of terrain. If there was a level two piece of terrain, it wouldn't be able to see. But as it's level one, the timber wolf gets partial cover from the Warhammer, but it has to be adjacent. The Warhammer does not get partial cover from the timber wolf because the Warhammer is not adjacent to the level one hex. So that's our first example. In our second example, I'm going to elevate the timber wolf here. And in this case, the Warhammer has no partial cover against the timber wolf. The timber wolf still has partial cover because the timber wolf's level, it's standing on level one, is elevated above the level zero that the Warhammer is standing on. So this still has partial cover. Another example of partial cover might be this. Toe to toe. Both our Warhammer and our Timberwolf 
both have partial cover against each other. And finally, I'm just going to do this one. And neither of these have partial cover because neither of them are adjacent. Now, one rule that catches a lot of people out is partial color, cover and elevation. So if the Warhammer is down here, you might think it's got partial cover against attacks because it is adjacent to a level one. But if the attacking unit is elevated above its level, so our timber wolf here is elevated against the Warhammer, the timber wolf gets partial cover because it is adjacent to a uh, level one and is higher than the Warhammer. But the Warhammer doesn't get partial cover because the timber wolf is elevated above the Warhammer. So elevation actually matters. Um, okay, next we're going to look at intervening terrain. So intervening terrain is a completely separate rule to partial cover and it does interact with line of sight but they shouldn't be uh, conflated, the ideas of partial cover and intervening terrain. Uh, trees never award partial cover. So there are only, there's only one type of intervening terrain in the Total Warfare rule set, and that is trees, either being heavy trees or light trees, so light woods or heavy woods. In the um, Total, in the um, advanced rules, uh, tac ops advanced rules you also get introduced smoke uh, jungle uh, foliage uh, crops so there are several different ones i'm not going to go through those we're just going to stick to the basic uh, woods so woods can either be considered light or heavy and we usually assign them a a, a number of density so light woods are one density and the heavy woods are two density so in this case, we've got a timber wolf here, firing against the Warhammer. We've got two uh, woods here. One is, level, one is a level one density, one is two density, and they can't see each other. If there's any point, three levels of wood, so either three lights or one light and two heavies or two heavies, uh, then they cannot obtain line of sight if they are on the same level. Now that's important. These trees and all trees here, okay, are level two, so they will block line of sight for the uh, two height um, battle mechs. Now, if, for instance, you are standing in a woods, so if this Warhammer were to take a step forward into the heavy woods and was standing in the heavy woods, then it could be seen because intervening terrain is only considered to be between the two units. So for instance, the between is only the hexes here, here, and here. In this case, there is only one hex of intervening terrain, but the Warhammer does get the defensive bonus of plus two from standing in the heavy woods of the woods that it's in. So if you're standing in woods, you can shoot out of the woods with no effect to you, but for incoming fire, you do get the bonus. So that's on tricky one. So if you're a defender standing in the woods, you don't get modified by the woods you're standing in, but the attacker does. In this case, the timber wolf, ignoring all other modifiers, the timber wolf shooting against the warhammer would have a plus three, plus one for the light woods, plus two for the heavy woods, whereas the warhammer would only have a plus one shooting against the timber wolf. If the timber wolf backed or up into this light woods, they can still see because there's still only one woods of intervening terrain between them, uh, intervening uh, woods, uh, but the Warhammer now would need a plus one for this woods and a plus one for the woods that the Timberwolf is standing in, and the Timberwolf would need a plus one for that woods, plus two for the woods the Warhammer is standing in, but it wouldn't count the woods it's in. So placement in woods is really important gets a little bit more tricky when you are talking about woods at different elevations. Okay, so we're gonna look at intervening terrain and elevation. We have our Warhammer standing on our hill. We have our Timberwolf standing behind this crop of trees, this grove of trees. And you'd think there might not be line of sight here, but in fact, 
the intervening rules say that the Warhammer, which is at level 4, it can see over the top of the woods, which are at level 2, to see the Timberwolf, which is also has a height of 2. So because the terrain is not between, because it's not at the same level as the Warhammer, the Warhammer can see over that. Now this does change if the terrain, if I just place this Mad Cat, the Timberwolf here, if it's adjacent to the uh, intervening terrain. If you're adjacent to the intervening terrain and the intervening terrain is at the same level as you are, then you both get the uh, modifier. So both the Timberwolf here will get a plus two to be hit and also there'll be a plus two to hit there. If we look at more complicated examples, this big grove of trees over here, we can have a more uh, difficult uh, idea to resolve. We have our timber wolf here, we have our um, in our tree, in our light woods here, we're going to place our warhammer and now do that, does that center woods count? So let's have a look. The warhammer is in woods, it gets affected by that, but because the woods next to it, even though they're adjacent, they are one level lower, so that doesn't affect the line of sight of the warhammer or the timber wolf. The Timberwolf, however, does benefit from the woods that are adjacent to it. So when the Warhammer is shooting at the Timberwolf, it would have a plus one for the adjacent woods next to the Timberwolf. When the Timberwolf was shooting at the Warhammer, it would have a plus one for the, its adjacent woods and a plus one for the woods the uh, Warhammer is standing in. But the center woods there on hex 1112 would not affect either battle mech. So that's a tricky situation. So if it's a lower level, the intervening terrain doesn't affect it. Okay, if it's a lower level, even if it's adjacent, if it's a lower level, it doesn't affect it. So let's look at another example. And just the last example here, we've got a level one. We're gonna combine the two rules here. We've got a level two, sorry, turret hill, and the timber wharf and the warhammer are both standing on level one, and there's a woods between them there. Both the Warhammer and the Timberwolf would both be in partial cover because they're both adjacent to a terrain feature which has one level below their base and both get the benefits of the tree which is one level above them. So there's a plus two for the Timberwolf to hit the Warhammer and a plus two for the Warhammer to hit the Timberwolf. So starting simple, we've got this grove of trees between the two mechs here. We draw a line of sight. It goes from the centre of the base to the centre of the base. And as you can see, it goes along each hex facing and it passes through these light woods here. It then also passes along the hex facing of these heavy woods here and it passes directly through these. So at the moment, there are four points of woods between these two. If we then move our Warhammer to here, let's say here actually, then we have to draw our line of sight between the two. So now, centre to centre, you can see that we're going through the hex, and it can go through any part of the hex of the heavy woods. We're going through the hex of the light woods. Line of sight is still blocked. A bit more tricky, this one. So I often find these ones probably the hardest ones to work out, and you need a steady hand for this sometimes to take models away. In this case here, going from center to center, you can see that the line of sight from the Warhammer passes through the first light woods, passes through the heavy woods, doesn't pass through the other light woods. Line of sight is still blocked, but sometimes if you're not careful, you can actually get the situations where line of sight could even pass through just the corner of a hex and at that times it can be very hard to judge on the hex maps. Uh, if any situation like that happens, then the best thing is to do a roll for it for a d6 or remove the uh, terrain and remove the um, uh, remove the battle mechs, make a note of where they are and then lay a flat edge uh, between them. Whereas, whereas a laser sight tends to wobble around. So that's all of the different rules to do with intervening terrain for woods. Again, there are more types of intervening terrain, but we won't cover them here. So starting simple, we've got this grove of trees between the two mechs here. We draw a line of sight. 
it goes from the centered base to the centered base and as you can see it goes along each hex facing and it passes through these light woods here it then also passes along the hex facing of these heavy woods here and it passes directly through these so at the moment there are four points of woods between these two if we then move our warhammer to here let's say here actually then we have to draw our line of sight between the two so now center to center you can see that we're going through the hex and it can go through any part of the hex of the heavy woods we're going through the hex of the light woods line of sight is still blocked a bit more tricky this one so i often find these ones probably the hardest ones to work out and you need a steady hand for this sometimes to take models away in this case here going from center to center you can see that the line of sight from the warhammer passes through the first light woods passes through the heavy woods doesn't pass through the other light woods line of sight is still blocked but sometimes if you're not careful you can actually get the situations where line of sight could even pass through just the corner of a hex and at that times it can be very hard to judge on the hex maps uh, if any situation like that happens then the best thing is to do a roll for it for a d6 or remove the uh, terrain and remove the um, uh, remove the battle mechs make a note of where they are and then lay a flat edge uh, between them whereas whereas a laser sight tends to wobble around so that's all of the different rules to do with intervening terrain for woods again there are more types of intervening terrain but we won't cover them here now a stranger situation and an often used tactic of battle mechs is to go prone in this case we've gone prone in the water and when a battle mech goes prone it becomes level one so now it's completely submerged water completely blocks line of sight even if you're adjacent so even if this warhammer was standing right here it would not be able to draw a line of sight or make weapon attacks against the timber wolf because the timber wolf is completely submerged now on this map there's no level or no depth to water but let's just say that this timber wolf here was standing in depth to water if it was standing in depth to water it would be totally submerged so depth two or below will completely submerge a battle mech. And let's say this um, Warhammer was submerged at depth one. Now you get an odd situation here that the torso weapons and arm weapons, anything from the waist up of the Warhammer couldn't shoot at the Timberwolf. But if the Warhammer had leg weapons, which it doesn't, but if it did have leg weapons, it could use the leg weapons to fire underwater at the Timberwolf. If they were both in depth to water and both underwater they both could fire at each other there are some special rules in total warfare for different ranges of weapons and it's also worth whenever you're dealing with water hexes to have a look at the rules on breaching and uh, flooding compartments which also come with uh, water hexes where whole sections can flood um, if they become uh, damaged or lose all of their armor and lose integrity So in our last situation, let's talk about helicopters and VTOLs. So VTOLs can operate at different levels. If they are at the same level that, of the terrain that they are in, that means effectively they're landed on a good day. On a bad day, it means they're crashed. So since they can occupy different levels, it's often keen to, a good idea to put a dice next to them. So I'm going to say, for instance, this one here, it's flying at level two now at level two that is the same level as the trees so at the moment it can't enter the hexes with the trees without crashing nor can it enter the hex with this level two terrain here because it will crash if it enters this hex here then because it's at level two it can fly over this because the object's at level one it could then drop one level of altitude to level one if it wanted to land. But it couldn't be at level one when it entered that hex, otherwise it would automatically crash. 
So key things here to remember, Woods is always level two. So if this um, BTLL here wanted to fly over here, where we've got Woods at level, uh, starting at level two, so going up to level four, because the hills at level two, and you add two more for the trees, then for this VTOL to fly over the trees, it would need to be at level five. If it was at level four, it would hit the trees. When it comes to uh, total cover, similar to other rules, if you have this VTOL here, and the VTOL is hovering at level one, then our battle mech here cannot see it because it's behind the level one, nor would it be able to see it if it's elevated, nor would it be able to see it if it was even elevated 20 levels. The basic rule is if you're the same level as the object you're behind, you are, you do get a complete cover. So that brings us to the end of our video on partial uh, on partial cover on line of sight and on intervening terrain. Remember those are three separate rules. They're all found from page 99 to 102 on Total Warfare and um, also in the Battle Mech Manual. And do remember there are some more complicated rules which you can add uh, in um, TACOP's advanced rules, but I would only do that once you have a handle on the basics. There are a couple of problems with line of sight rules. Um, one issue is that bridges aren't really described. So for instance, you've got this bridge here and this bridge here is at level zero going under a depth one meter. So at the moment, this hovercraft, if we had a hovercraft here, I haven't got a hovercraft, but say this tank was a hovercraft, it wouldn't necessarily be able to cross uh, under the river because this at the moment isn't marked. I mean, really, I would say that that level needs to be a level two, but it's a bit tricky on this map. So bridges really I need, ideally need to be given a level, but at the moment, this seems to be, because it's got no level shown, it's at level zero. And because there's depth one water, if, if effectively there's no gap between the water and the bridge. Um, what would happen, for instance, if two mechs were standing here, uh, here, and there was the bridge in between them. Oh, in this case, the bridge would not block line of sight because the bridge is effectively just a road. Uh, so it's got no, um, no dimensions. So it would not block line of sight, but both mechs would get partial cover. In some more complicated examples, which only come up when you've got more complicated terrain, like this piece of terrain over here, then you will have to kind of house rule some ideas about how line of sight works if you're behind large structures or in cases where there's tunnels involved. Uh, I've had scenarios where tunnels are involved uh, that are only one level tall and then that can make uh, line of sight ruling a little bit more tricky and you may have to house rules though because they're not covered. But on any of the basic maps from the Battletech Game of Armed Combat box set, from the Grasslands map pack, uh, all of those the line of sight rules are very easily interpreted uh, and they shouldn't pose a problem. Uh, one thing we haven't covered in this video is sublevels. Sublevels are when uh, we go into negatives and literally that rules exactly the same that if you are in a sublevel, a sublevel one. So for instance, say this water wasn't here and this was a sublevel one instead and this tank was in this dry lake basin here uh, and wasn't submerged and this mech was here, the tank would get total cover against the mech because it was against something that's one level taller than it. But if the mech moves to be adjacent, then it could see it. So if this was a, a completely dried out, and you do see that in some of the older uh, Battletech maps where they have um, sub-levels. So until next time, that's been my guide to line of sight, partial cover, and intervening terrain and if you've got any questions just pop them on the chat.